Good evening, everybody. We are back from our trip. Had a great time. Learned a lot about the camper. The first couple trips, the size was a little intimidating, being that it was so small. But this third trip and our real first dune trip, it uh, turns out we kind of had our routine down as far as packing and where to put stuff. And it seemed to go a lot smoother. And then we were able to stay outside until it was bedtime, where the first two mini trips, uh, one was really windy, couldn't stay outside at all. The other one, it was cold up in the mountains. So uh, we were in the camper a lot. So this trip being out until bedtime, eating and showering and those things, it just was really nice when you got in the camper at around nine o'clock or something and had a couple hours to uh, really relax. Anyway, what I'm doing tonight is kind of going over a couple of the things that in my mind have uh, come up as I think a priority. And since I weighed it, knowing that it is 1,240 pounds and probably only gonna get heavier as I add a water tank and stuff like that. I did buy the 1,195 pound capacity trailer because if you guys remember in the very first video, they were out of the 1,700 pound one. And then I just decided to reinforce the frame, which I think the frame itself, the rectangle is strong enough, especially with the uh, three quarter inch oak floor and then all the welds that I did. Uh, but the weakest link in this equation, I believe, is the tongue. So I'm just going to take a few minutes and show you what I plan to do with that. Okay, so if you remember in my first few videos, I talked about ripping this whole tongue out, rebuilding the triangle, and then lengthening it to make the tongue bigger. But I, I want to stay with the original size of the trailer. Here's what bothers me. This mount here is super cheesy. You can see how this is bent in just for me trying to keep this tight here. So the first thing I plan to do is I'm gonna get a spacer, a half inch diameter spacer. I'm gonna straighten this out. I'm gonna put that spacer around this bolt so that when I tighten it, it does not compromise this structure. Once I put the spacer in there, I'm also gonna cut some two by two. Well, they're actually gonna be two by four because I'm going to L bracket here. I'm going to box this whole section in and weld it. And then I'm, this is going to have a little flange up here that I'm going to bolt and weld. So this will be boxed and bracketed to the frame. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, boxed and bracketed. So this becomes one solid piece here. And I'm not just relying on these cheesy factory welds here to hold this whole thing together. Okay, and on to the next bit of hokiness, uh, in the same manner that this rear mount is bending. You can see this bending here. Like, what was the thinking here? Why didn't this box come all the way out so this would be, you know, seated up against the back of here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some blocks that go in here, square this up. So when I tighten this, I'm not tweaking this. I'm actually compressing it against the solid box here. And then I'm going to create two inner and two outer brackets. And the L brackets are going to mount to here, and then I'm going to mount it to here. So both of these mount points in the front and in the back back here are going to be super solid. The way they are now, even though they're welded, uh, they concern me the most because we're relying again on these factory welds. And when I had knocked off the casters off the back of the trailer, I had to grind these welds to knock the casters off the back of the trailer behind the rear tires. But I remember one of these, when I hit it, it just fell off. So I don't have a lot of confidence in these. So I'm going to take care of that issue. Okay, the third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some steel. And the steel is going to run from inside this rail to the top of this rail, and then all the way across the trailer to the other side. It's going to be bolted and welded. So I'm gonna, not going to just have two mount points here. I'm going to have these two mount points and then another point where it mounts to the frame about a foot forward on the inside rail, on top and across. And that's all going to reinforce the back of this thing, uh, making it super strong. Okay, so the fourth measure I'm going to take to strengthen this trailer is I am going to weld this seam here and across the front. And the same thing on the other side over here. I'm going to remove this hitch. I'm going to weld all this, the whole tongue, to reinforce this tongue. And then the final measure is going to be, I'm going to add another cross brace uh, closer to the front of the triangle tongue here. 
and then I'm going to completely put a deck on top of this thing, bolt it down all the way around. That's going to make this thing rock solid. So I realize this looks like a lot of work just to reinforce that tongue. Why don't we just rip it out and rebuild a whole new one? It probably would be easier to completely cut that thing off of there and build another tongue on the ground with heavier duty steel, bolt it in, weld it in, and do all that. But I'm getting away from the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't remember. Maybe I'll think of the word, but I'd be taking away from the original design of what I wanted to do was make the most out of a four by eight trailer. The longest part's gonna be fabbing up all these brackets, which I'm gonna to try to do here by myself. Um, I'm gonna cut up a bunch of metal and use my torch and bend stuff and weld it in and, and bolt it in. I've never done anything like that before. I do watch a lot of videos on YouTube, which is why I did this. So we're gonna give that a try. That's gonna be the next step is to reinforce that tongue before I do anything else. A couple guys asked me about these magnetic mount lights. They saw they were magnetic mounted. And the reason is, is I don't want to install the permanent lights until I get all the frame stuff done, which includes the tongue. I want to build a rear bumper and I want to build a shelf behind the back fender, you know, on both sides. So there's a lot more stuff I want to do. So a couple final thoughts. I've had three people get a hold of me and tell me that because they saw these videos, they are now gonna build their own campers. I'm not looking for credit, but honestly, that's one of the reasons why I did this because I wanted to camp, I wanted to go riding with my kid, he's young, I like to keep him involved in that kind of thing. And I thought, darn it, I'm not gonna go spend a bunch of money on a camper, we're gonna build one, you know, a glorified tent. My first intention was to go the cheapest, easiest way but as I began to research that and look at some of those cheap, easy trailers, they basically looked like dog houses on wheels. And, and I guess it's, you know, it's a, that would be a glorified tent too, but my creative mind just went nuts and we ended up with this thing where we spent a bunch of money and it weighs more than we thought. So that's cool though, that you guys are going for it because the experience has been fun for us and um, we're enjoying it thoroughly now. It's hard to believe we're sitting out in the middle of nowhere in this thing and we got the TV playing, you know, and the heater going and stuff. And it, it really is a lot of fun. Um, I'm not an expert as some of you know, definitely. You can see some of the stuff that I do is trial and error. I, I'm just trying to make it work as best as I can logically based on the research I do on YouTube. But if you have any questions, I'd, be, I'd love to help if I can. Um, and if you have any comments for me, uh, feel free to leave them down below. So it looks like I've done enough talking once again. Let's get to work. Good morning, everybody. It's Saturday the 10th and I was able to go to the store uh, and get all the brackets and get all the steel that I need to make the brackets and the gussets and things. And just for the heck of it, I jack this thing up. Check this out. You see this? Tons and tons and tons of wheel bearing play. And on the back of the wheel bearing, on the back side, is grease coming out everywhere. So, man, I've had it with this. I've already done some research. I can get an 1800 pound axle. It's square just like this one here that comes with the Harbor Freight trailer. It'll bolt right in here. The only difference, it's 57 and a half inches long instead of 46. So like I think I said before, I can go to one and a quarter inch spacer instead of a two inch spacer and end up with the same tire profile right here. And I think that's going to solve my problems. Comes with bearings and everything. This is just a joke. The bearings on this hub are standard sizing and the bearings that come off of the axle from the Harbor Freight trailer are metric bearings. So there's just got to be something wrong with mating these bearings to the spindle. So I'm just going to tighten it up again because we want to do another short trip uh, coming up here soon. I'm not even going to bore you with that, but I just wanted to update you on that. Okay, so one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tube right here. I'm going to use this tube to create a bushing in here to go around that bolt. I'm going to create that bushing first because this needs to be in place. This all needs to get straightened out before I create the L brackets on the other side. And that's what we're going to do right now.
So I wasn't even close to getting it that tight when I put the trailer together because these things flexed in, right? So now with that bushing in there, this is solid. The bushing takes up all of the force, not allowing these little hangers to bend. So I feel way better about that. So now we'll get the other side done. I got number two done, got her in there. Interestingly enough, I did weld the inside seams of this before I put the trailer together. When I pulled these bolts out, I was very careful to see if this was gonna move, but no, the, those welds are holding it sturdy and I was pounding on this thing to bend it back to its original position and uh, everything is pretty solid, pretty happy with that. So I got the second bushing in and I'm also gonna do bushings in the spring hanger of the slide spring, which is the rear part of the leaf spring because it's just an open hanger without even this and they're squeezing together, it's so cheesy. So I'm gonna make a couple of these for the rear too. So I'm gonna do that next. So that's the rear spring hanger. Well, it's just basically a slot for the slide spring to ride in. And uh, you can see that this corner, this the corners are pinched in. You just run a bolt through there and it just pulls the metal together. So I'm gonna create another bushing here. These are easy enough to just bend back, I mean. There's nothing holding together. So we'll just get these back a little little further than where we want them. And then we will make a bushing and we'll shove her in there and bolt her back together. people that's the end of it for this Saturday yeah this is my little makeshift machine shop here some of you guys remember I bought this last winter to cut metal the cheapy little Harbor Freight one and it came without a blade in it I was so bummed so I just used this cutoff wheel to make the bushings uh, so we got all those four bushings in just to sano out the tongue and give me a lot more confidence in it and uh, you know I made some comments about it being cheesy and I know that's because it's supposed to be a 1195 pound capacity trailer of course we're at 1240 plus whatever we put in there so i'm just going to make sure that it's uh beefy so thanks for watching that's it for tonight welcome aboard all you new subscribers and all you guys that have contacted me that are talking about building trailers please video them you know it's just awesome to watch other people's videos and see all their ideas and that's what got me started by watching other people so have a good one. Maybe I'll get some more stuff done tomorrow. All right, so I got some cutting wheels for the saw that came without any wheels. I left it in the box till yesterday, so that's why I was so disappointed when I opened it and found out there was no wheel on it. And the mechanism to hold the wheel was down inside the box, so someone nabbed the wheel. Anyway, um, here's my latest idea for this area right here. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to stack a bunch of washers. I'm going to put a bunch of washers in here to back this up. Because I can't open this to weld anything in there. So we'll see how that goes. So we're going to bend this thing back out where it belongs here. That looks pretty good. That looks about right. We'll shove some washers in there and then I can always come back and I can weld this all in here. Okay, we got the washers in there pretty nicely. There we go. That's going to finish up that deal. That's going to keep that from 
collapsing on itself. And then if I want to come back and uh, weld straight down or weld up something here to make it fit, we can do that. So we'll do that to the other side now. And it fits perfect. Then, yeah, now we can tighten it down. Hey, there you are. You weren't in the video yesterday. Mm -hmm. Where were you? Side playing with my cousins and stuff. Oh, we had relatives, huh? Yeah. That was fun. Baby. <laughs> All right, we'll tighten this one down and see how it works. So now I crank down on this nut just like those bushings we made, and these washers make this one big solid piece. Yeah. Came out good, huh? Mm -hmm. So let's do the other side. These washers are clean. All right, number two is done. Washers are in. I wasn't sure if that was just going to be hokey doing that, but it's really solid. Very happy with that. So it's kind of cool. We're not as stressed to hurry. Last year, this time we were working and we're trying to get this thing done, thinking we were going to go, but now it's done enough to use. So it's kind of relaxing being able to just work at our own pace. Anyway, so this one is done. And again, I may come back with some plate, box this in here. We'll see. Don't know. It's just relaxing and relaxing under it. But we've got six mount points beefed up since yesterday. What did you say? It's just relaxing laying under the camp on seven inside it. All right, so here we go. Bye. After doing a little more looking at this trailer, what I decided to do uh, in terms of my next move is to take this angle iron and bolt it, weld it to this, bolt it, weld it across. So now the tongue and the frame really are mated really well right at the point where that weight is pivoting. So I had to cut these out because there's welds behind here because I welded this, right? So that allows it to fit flush up against here and here. Looks like that's what we're going to do next. We're done for the day, but we got this metal in here and we got it cut exactly where we want it. And then I'm going to get more angle iron come from this corner back to this point to make this triangle tray a little wider and I'll reinforce it all around. So this is, I think as far as the frame and the tongue being sturdy enough to haul 12, 13, 14, whatever 100 pounds this end up being when we're all done, when I put the bumper and the shelf and all the other stuff in here, I don't think that's going to be a question. I think this frame and the tongue are going to be solid enough. So then obviously the next weakest point is going to be leaf springs, shackles, axle. We're going to go with what we got now. I was able to tighten that yesterday and it tightened up fine and it spins fine and we'll just see how that goes again. But so this is what we got this weekend. We got all six points beefed up and then we got this thing cut and put where we want to do it and we're going to go from there. So thanks for watching you guys. All you guys that are building, film it. Let's all share our ideas and just create our own little do-it-yourself camping community. So thanks for watching.
Hey, good evening, guys. Thanks for watching the video just now. I hope you enjoyed that uh, as we're getting back at working on this camper. I just wanted to take a few minutes and address a question somebody asked me that really got me thinking. Um, overall, we are very happy with this camper and we are having a lot of fun with it. But this subscriber asked that if I were to do this again, what would I do differently? And let's see. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. But there are actually six things I would have done differently. Okay, the first one, I would have built this camper with a one inch thick wall that I see a lot of teardrop guys using. These doors are designed for the one inch thick wall. That's why there's a gap here, which I will trim out eventually. But not only would it accommodate the door better, it would have cut way down on the weight, not having to frame the whole thing out. And then I wouldn't have these seams that you see as I walk around the trailer. It would have eliminated those uh, mistakes that you see in the finish before I coated it and had just a nice solid piece. Uh, knowing what I know now too, I would have sanded the outside much better at those junctions to get rid of those. So I would have gone the one inch walls. Number two, I would have went with the higher capacity Harbor Freight trailer, the 1700 pound trailer. Hands down, I didn't because I didn't want to wait. We wanted to start that day and I jumped the gun. So you're seeing now all the things I'm having to do to make up for that. So that comes with the bigger axle, comes with the five lug hubs. And then the third thing I would have done is I would have um, built it with more weight forward. You know, you see I have kind of an opposite of a teardrop design. When you look at these teardrop trailers, they build them with more of the mass forward, keeping the tongue heavier, more stable on the tow hitch, not wanting to do any kind of like a, a wheelie or anything. This trailer wants to kind of wheelie and when we tow I put stuff forward I put the big toolbox in here and as I build that tongue up and put the the uh, utility box on the front and the spare tire that's all going to be solved but I wouldn't have had to think about that if I had built with more mass forward the other thing I would have done is I would have done more cabinets uh, we do have a lot of cabinets in here you see them but I would have done a little bit more cabinet cabinet storage and I'm going to make some cabinets up here incidentally for food and then I would have planned better for a sink. We have not needed the sink since we've been in here. Um, we've just used that two and a half gallon water jug with the spigot out front for, the, for me and my boy, and it's worked out fine. But it would have been neat to have a sink in here. So I would have planned better for that. I got ahead of that, and I couldn't go back is why. The other thing I would do differently, and I didn't do it because I was very intimidated by it, but I would have loved to have done aluminum siding because it's very lightweight. It's very cool. It lasts long and looks good. If you ding one, you can replace it. It's really, really uh, the perfect siding, I think, for a little camper like this. But again, I stayed away from that because I was really intimidated by the process. If you watch Oregon Batman's video, he does the aluminum siding and it looks great. Am I happy with the Duraback? I am very happy. It cleans up nice. I could tell it's very durable, but I spent over $800 on the Duraback. And I think the aluminum would have been more and I didn't anticipate that bill with the Duraback. It just took a lot more product than I anticipated to apply. So those are the things that I would have done differently. Again, still very happy with the camper. And the last thing I'd like to say is I'm always popping around YouTube looking for guys building trailers. And um, take a look at Florin Demian, if I'm saying that right, I hope I am. He built this camper and I only see the one video on it here, but he built this camper and it is just the coolest thing it's um um take a look at this camper that he built go over to his page and check it out i just wanted to give him some props because he did a great job with this thing i just i think it's awesome so uh good job florin thanks for watching everybody and we will see you next time